My name's Chris Owen and I'm the author of Ella Bark Baking. Um, it's a cookbook raising money for rescue greyhounds and other dog rescues, but it contains lots of really easy, healthy and inexpensive treats to make for your dog. You don't need to worry about having lots of culinary skills, you don't need to be an expert chef. We're going to make cheesy chomps. I've tried to keep the recipes really simple for you and all these ingredients are either in your cupboards already or really easy to obtain at your local supermarket. Today we're going to be using cup measures. These are readily available at supermarkets. I think these cost just over a pound. They'll also give you the weights in grams if you want to use your scales. So if you're ready to start, you just need a nice bowl and just five simple ingredients. So, first ingredient we're going to put in our bowl is half a cup of wholemeal flour. And if you want to weigh this out, this is actually 60 grams. If you haven't got wholemeal, you can use plain. It's absolutely fine. But wholemeal has just got um, less refinement to it, less chemicals in it, and it gives a nice nutty flavour. The next ingredient we've got in here is just normal breakfast oats. There's one cup of oats, which is about 100 grams. And this as well, just pop that into your bowl. Now today I'm using cheddar cheese. But you can use any reasonably hard cheese. You can use red Leicester, that gives the colour of nice biscuits. Today it's just normal cheddar cheese that I had in the cupboard. This is one quarter cup, that's about 100 grams. You can either grate it or chop it, whichever you prefer. The smaller pieces that you can use, the easier it is to roll out. And our next but last ingredient is Parmesan cheese. This is finely grated. If you find it difficult to grate, you can buy it ready grated in supermarkets. And in here we've got about half a cup, which is about 40 grams. Now your only measurement really, if you're using cups, is olive oil. If you haven't got olive oil, you can use vegetable oil. If you want to put a shine on your dog's coat, you can always use uh, cod liver oil. And that will really help. And in here I'm going to put one tablespoonful. And it just helps to bind your ingredients together. Now in a jug, I have 100 millilitres of water. You might not need all of this, depending on your measurement of oats. So just start with, say, half of the water. I'm using a big spoon. Just stir it together until your ingredients start to come into one bowl. So I might add the rest of this water. And then just using your hands, just slowly start to pull it into a bowl. This is a really good uh, recipe for the children to make because you've got no sharp implements, no knives, um, and it's really good for them. get them in the kitchen, get them making things for their dogs. And uh, this is a really nice recipe. If you have a problem with gluten, you can use uh, brown rice flour or gluten free flour for this recipe. This is ready for rolling out. Just sprinkle a little bit of your wholemeal flour and perhaps on your hands and then your dough is ready for rolling out. Now today I'm using a rolling pin and just spread a little bit of flour on it. If you really haven't got a rolling pin, an empty uh, milk bottle will do just fine. So just gently, just roll your biscuit dough out and you're looking for a thickness of about quarter to a half an inch. But again, don't worry about it. You are making dog biscuits, and if they're a little bit too thick and a little bit too thin, your dogs will be just fine. Um, if you make them a little thick, you might just have to cook them for a little bit longer. Now today, I'm using um, a bone-shaped cutter, because I think it's fun, and when you give them for gifts to your friends, they look lovely, wrapped up in a little bag with a ribbon. These are really easy to buy in cake shops, or go on the internet and browse, there's lots of things to choose from. And we're just going to cut the biscuits out and then you can just gently press them out onto a baking tray. And if you prefer, you can cover it in baking paper to make sure they don't stick. And there's your first biscuit. And then you just, just continue cutting them out and place them gently on the tray.
Now, depending on the size of your dog, obviously, you want to make bigger or smaller biscuits. And don't forget, these are quite protein rich because, you know, they've got lots of cheese and parmesan in them. So these are an occasional treat. So you may want to use a really small cutter. Um, if you haven't got a cutter, or you don't want the children to use a cutter, if you're getting your children to make these, you can just form little cheesy balls press them with your hands into little circles and those will cook just fine um, and your dog will be quite happy with them. If you want to restrict these to just one or two a day, make really big biscuits and break them into small segments. So we're going to continue now to live rolled out. I mean using a big cutter like this for a good sized dog like a Greyhound or a German Shepherd um, I'm probably only going to get, say, a dozen biscuits out of this mixture. If you use a much smaller cutter, you can probably get 20, 24. Some people, as I say, make nice little balls, and these freeze beautifully for when you want them. Or you can just pop them in the fridge and use them over a space of the week. So little tail end bits, don't waste them. Just press them into little circles and cook them with the rest of your biscuits. So your biscuits now really are ready to go into your oven, which has been preheating to 180C, which is about a gas mark four. And these are now ready to go in. And they're gonna go in top half of the oven and initially for about 20 minutes. And then we might check them and turn them over. They may need another 10-15 minutes if you've got a fan oven, perhaps another 20 if you're cooking with gas. They should be turning to just start to be gently golden. Our biscuits have come out of the oven. They're quite hot, but you can see that they're nicely golden. The longer you cook them, the longer they will keep because the drier that they will be. These biscuits freeze beautifully, so you might want to make a whole batch and say freeze some in small bags for later. But what I'm going to do is just gently turn these out onto a white tray because obviously they need to cool before they're ready to feed to your dog. So our biscuits are nice and cool um, and we're going to now see if they pass the Naturally Happy Dogs taste test with our assistant for the day, Katie the Labrador. 